Hello and welcome back. We are discussing section 5.4 today, applying definite integration, distribution of wealth, and average value. So we've tackled uh, kind of one and a half learning objectives so far. Uh, we've looked at general procedure for definite integration in, well, in applications. We've talked about area between two curves. We did this net excess profit deal. And so our last task for this learning objective is to look at distribution of wealth, which is one of my favorite applications. Uh, let's see if we can get ourselves to the right slide and we'll check that out. So uh, one of the, the most interesting kind of units of uh, inequality that, that comes up for us is using the so-called Lorentz curve and, and computing the uh, Gini index, which is actually something that gets used uh, frequently in economics. There's other measures, but this is one way of determining how unequal the distribution is uh, amongst a group. So Lorentz curve in general for a particular, I, I say society, but it could be any group. It could be within a group of say lawyers or um, uh, or, or some other economic group or demographic. But if we look at, um, a society as a whole, we look at some function L of X, which is this Lorentz curve. And this is our starting point. This gives us, and this takes a minute to kind of process, but the fraction of total annual national income or whatever, it doesn't have to be national, but in this case, we're talking about a nation, total annual income earned by the lowest paid 100 X percent of the wage earners. So X only goes between zero and one for good reason, because you want 0% up to 100% of the, of the group. But uh, just to kind of make, try to make a little bit of sense out of this. So for instance, if we plugged in 0.4 for our Lorentz curve, um, then what we should get is, uh, so X would be 0.4, so 40%, the lowest paid 40% of the wage earners. And then let's just say, for instance, what we get out as an answer is 0.1. So that would mean that 10% of the wealth, that is the output of our Lorentz curve, was controlled by 40%, the, the, the lowest 40% of our wage earners. So usually we, we won't, well, we won't, not usually, we won't have uh, our uh, L of X value ever be bigger than X because then they wouldn't be the lowest paid ones. Um, well, we'll explore that a little bit more. So if we look at the United States, we could take uh, data through 2009 and we can get ourselves a decent Lorentz curve uh, in this polynomial. Um, if, you're, if you're keeping careful track of things, you might notice that this uh, minus 0.016 is a little bit, uh, puts us a little bit off, but um, it ends up giving us a pretty good model. So uh, our tasks here are to compute and interpret L of 0.8. So we're gonna do uh, a little bit of what I just did verbally. Um, and then we're gonna figure the Gini index out using this particular model. And we'll come back to review this definition that's given here in words, but um, it, it's described as the area between the Lorentz curve and perfect equality. So if everybody in the society had the exact same uh, amount of money, then your Lorentz curve would be the line y equals x. So we're going to look at how far off our Lorentz curve is between uh, the actual and what the perfect equality would be. And since we're computing area between two curves, you guessed it, we're in our into definite integral territory there. Okay, uh, the first thing is not a calculus question, um, but it does involve us going back to that uh, that Lorentz curve computation and plugging in 0.8s for all of the, the values of x. And so that's a quick calculator computation, 0.379. This is all great function stuff, but just remember that our interpretation is that this 0.8 is supposed to represent the uh, percentage of uh, lowest wage earners we're looking at, so 0.8 would be 80%. And the point, the output of this function is supposed to represent what percentage of the wealth they have. So the, the lowest paid 80% of the citizens have a little less than 38% of the wealth. So again, perfect equality would be that the lowest 80% have 80% of the wealth, um, because then everybody would have the exact same amount of money. Um, that's not the case. Uh, so the, some comparison will have to be drawn here. Is it, is it bad in some sense that uh, the lowest paid 80% only control 38% or is that sort of okay in the grand scheme of things? So uh, that's where we hit the Gini index. So region between line y equals x and Lorentz curve 
is basically the area between those two curves. So the thing we're going to be trying to figure out, uh, mo most importantly, this, there's a, an additional piece to this, but we're most concerned with this area. So that's exactly the strategy that we've been working with in this section. If we want to find the area in between these curves, we would integrate from, uh, let's see, our values of x only go from 0 to 1 because that's where they stop making sense. Once we get 100% of our wage earners, we can stop counting. So we'll go from 0 to 1, and then we're looking at the top line being y equals x. That's our perfect equality line. And then here's the actual Lorentz curve for uh, the United States model that we're using. So uh, remember that the definition they gave us for the Gini index, the most important piece is the area between the two curves, but it also gets divided by the area under uh, y equals x. But that's actually going to end up being not too bad. So here's what our numerator looks like. Uh, again, here's the perfect equality. Uh, and here is our actual uh, Lorentz curve for the United States model that we're using. And so the difference between those two things integrated from 0 to 1 would be the area between those two curves. And then the area under y equals x would just be the integral. Same x values, but just the integral of x. So plugging in our actual values here, uh, I did skip one step, x minus, and then our L of x has that formula that we were given all the way back at the beginning. And that looks like uh, 2.3x cubed minus 2.24x uh, squared, uh, et cetera, all the way through. So then we're going to compute uh, integral from 0 to 1 of x on the bottom. And our Gini index looks like... Uh, there's our function on top. This was just power rule. So all we were doing was raising up uh, to the power of four and then dividing that exponent, or sorry, that coefficient out in front by that exponent. Uh, same deal all the way through. So we end up with, and there's a one because this was a constant before. So then uh, integral on the bottom was integral of x. So that power goes up by one, divide by the new exponent. So we've got half. And all that's left to do is to plug in ones and zeros everywhere. And so we end up with uh, about 0.5, I think it was 0 0.50 something else, but uh, rounds to about 0.5. So interpreting that, uh, the Gini index is a measure of inequality. So uh, this says looking across the whole spectrum of, uh, uh, of wage earners in, this, in the U.S., we're looking at, you know, 50% of the perfect uh, income equality. So um, if we had 100% inequality, that would mean that Basically, nobody had any money except for one, you know, tyrant basically at the at the top of the food chain who had all of the money in the entire society. Um, the other end of the spectrum would be zero percent inequality. So zero percent inequality would mean that everybody has the exact same amount of money, and we'd be right along that line. Y equals x. Um, if we looked at the actual, I think the CIA World Factbook gives us something like 0 0.47 for the uh, Gini index for the United States. So um, our, our polynomial implied a little bit more inequality, but uh, pretty close. So uh, that does it for uh, the Lorentz curve, and we'll be back in the next uh, section for uh, talking about average value.